Well, this chair is an interesting case study. It's just a common banister back chair. It's been pieced up all the way up to here. So from here down, on all four legs, this is all replaced. So all these stretchers, all the legs right here. It's been refinished. It, it really is, you know, it's a $50 chair, except the history. Why would they show up at the beginning of the course? I have, I have a theory about that. Okay. On a cold night like tonight, you have a fire going in your fireplace, right? And in an 18th century house, whether the fire's on or not, it's cold. I mean, it's cold in those houses, I can tell you. The draft that's coming across the floor, the windows are going back, and the drafts are incredible. So you're cold. But the warmest place in a fire, in a house like that is as close to the fire as you can get. So by, and I once, we have a sofa chair at home with a low seat. I decided I had, I was really cold. I had a fever, I was really chilled. I took the chair with a low seat, it made all the difference in the world. I was suddenly warm. And I think many of these chairs were cut down because they wanted to be warm on a cold winter night. And they said, well, let's cut the damn chair down. And so it was warmer. And I think that's a big part of it. I think another reason is that there was a style for a while of having casters, which are brass little wheels. Why that style ever came in, but it came in for a while and it went out, fortunately. Not all chairs had to have wheels on them. And so they cut them down to accommodate casters. So the, and they also warped this chair by about 1730, and pushing it across the floor a lot compromised the chair's feet. So there's a lot of reasons why they thought that. Couldn't it be because the person was about four foot two? Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Grandma, she, she, her feet didn't touch the floor. That was a pain in the ass. So she <laughs> got it off. Yeah, but okay. So, <laughs> Question is, what if the chair ended up in a damp area and the feet rotted? Very likely. That's a very good possibility. We find a lot of good antiques in basements and attics, in barns, because they, they became useless. You know, they were out of style. They didn't need them anymore. Throw it in the basement. Throw it in the attic. Would it be inappropriate to take old wood or old seat and then make a new one to your chair? Different. 
it absorbs stain differently. So that is a, a big giveaway when we find so, somebody did a bad job of restoration using new wood on an old chair or just the drawers or whatever. So we always have to use old wood. So then you didn't restore these seats. You came out and came water? I'm sorry? So you didn't, you didn't. No, we seat did seat. try to replicate because, okay, so that's actually a very good question. We don't want anybody to ever think that uh, we were trying to fake something. So it was, I guess it was the other, which is the other one? No, this one, maybe. Uh, which was a brand new seat. We could have made, our cat maker could have made a seat that would fool 90% of the people. There's no question about it. I mean, the cat makers we use aren't really good. And they know all the techniques, they use old wood. You know, they can get it by, but then we would never do that. We make it so that there's always no question about what's being restored. If you buy, if you find a 56 Corvette in a, in a garage, and you can get a craftsman to really make it the restoration of a fender, you don't want to ever make it so that it's a, so it will fool somebody. That's not, that's not cricket. You know, you gotta leave the inside so it looks different, or make it so that it's never question that it's a, a reproduction or a replacement. So the reason this chair is here is because the chair itself is a wreck. It's pieced up this high, and all the stretches from here down are in place. <coughs> it's been refinished. I mean, it really has no antiquity much left anymore. However, history is important. And history sometimes is way more important than the object. This was Norman Rockwell's. He used it in his paintings. And I know that for a fact, because when I bought it 30 years ago at the sale of Norman Rockwell's stuff that the, his family didn't want, the museum didn't want, my father and I bought a great, great, great secretary. But we had previewed it two days before, and I looked around and I thought, there's got to be some things here that someday will be notified, noticed as Norman Rockwell's. So fortunately, we had the big book on Norman Rockwell's paintings. And I went through it and found this chair. And I thought, oh my god, i got to buy this chair. And because it was pieced up, I bought it for nothing. And there it is. And so in Manchester, Vermont, there's a shop, and all they sell is Norman Rockwell prints. That's it. That's all they sell. And uh, so this print was there, and I said, um, I have this chair. He said, well, you don't have that chair. I said, yeah, I do. <laughs> so, so you know, I said, how do you know that? He said, because that was Norman Rockwell. I said, no, it's mine. <laughs> and he said, how do you know? I said, because I know it. I bought it at his auction when he died. And he said, you know, that's the most famous sought after print of all. But everybody wants that print. How much you want for your chair? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's Norman Rockwell's chair. It's worth $50 as a chair. But it's worth a whole lot more to somebody who's a Norman Rockwell officiando or, you know, they wanted someday to put it back into the museum of the chair that actually was the subject of that painting. So, so there you go. The history is, is way more worth. How is the same chair? I'm sorry? How do you prove? It, because when you come up here, you can compare every little divot, every little thing. If I questioned you and said, that is not the same chair, bill of sale, I mean, how would you prove it? Okay, I can prove it because I bought it at the Norman Rockwell auction. Bill of sale? I don't know, probably don't have that. <laughs> I don't care. It's, 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 I don't really care. I don't have to, I don't have to impress anybody with my Norman Rockwell chair. I know what it is. Did Norman Rockwell have a sword? I don't know. No, I think it was long before. I think this, because this restoration was done way before. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, there's no question. Yeah, this restoration was done before that painting. <laughs> You want to get a lawyer? <laughs>